Welcome, my dear friends, to my YouTube channel in Montum Sanctum on the Holy Mountain. Recently, one of my uh, listeners to my videos um, prompted me to share with you about the life I'm living as a hermit. And uh, I suppose it's about time that I try to share my spiritual journey. Um, this is not going to be obviously a, a long uh, biography, um, autobiography rather, but an attempt to share with you why God chooses to call certain people to such a life within the church. So first of all, of course, um, a few um, important details. My name is Paul, For Father Paul Lester, and uh, up until recently, I have been a, a parish priest in various parishes in the Archdiocese of Birmingham in the United Kingdom. I haven't always been a Catholic, in fact, I became a Catholic when I was um, 30. But my spiritual journey to the vocation that I have responded to and I'm seeking to live out it all began a long, long time ago. In fact, if I think about it carefully, the seeds were sown perhaps when I was as young as eight years old. Though, of course, I didn't understand what was going on within me at that time. An impulse, a, a, a drawing from something beyond me uh, that, uh, um, which made me uh, feel and experience an interconnectedness uh, with uh, another reality, for a spiritual dimension, if you like. And that I found particularly so um, when, um, in the closeness to the environment, in, to nature. Uh, when I was young, um, my grandparents, who uh, lived in the country, um, had a, a small holding, and um, in nestling at uh, the foot of the Malvern Hills in Worcestershire, and I spent many summers there, uh, staying uh, with them, and uh, sometimes uh, uh, my parents uh, uh, stayed, and sometimes my two cousins stayed, and uh, we, me and my cousins, used to go out and play in the woods and the fields. But uh, as I've been reminded by one of my cousins, I used to, they used, I used to slip away from them after playing, uh, and to be found on my own, in um, I suppose in a state of uh, quiet um, absorption into what was around me, a certain connection. Uh, why, why? What was it about this child uh, that was uh, ordinary and extraordinary? I, I don't know. I didn't understand it at the time. Anyway, I, I don't really want to talk too much about about uh, you know, biographical details, I want to rather share with you, as one of my uh, viewers have asked me to do so, what is the purpose of being a hermit? And uh, that impulse to be a hermit uh, transcends all times and cultures. But locating my own particular journey, um, I'm a Catholic priest and a hermit too. Um,
In our increasing uh, complex society, uh, a society that has um, often rejected the spiritual or the other, the church in, has need of individuals to remind everybody of that other spiritual dimension, to be, as it were, uh, shall we say, a lighthouse keeper. You know, a lighthouse, um, I think they're all automated now, but uh, a long time ago, a lighthouse had a lighthouse keeper. And uh, a lighthouse would be that beacon of light shining out to sea so that those in danger or could uh, steer an even course. And in a sense, uh, a hermit is a lighthouse keeper a bearer of light in the world and in the heart of the church to give hope and encouragement to people to find their way amidst all the storms and complexities of life so that they might find, to pursue the analogy, a safe harbour and so they may find God and finding him love him more and more. So, um, the impulse uh, to become a hermit, as I said, has been with me really on and off since I was a young boy, but of course uh, as I grew up um, I didn't understand what that impulse meant and how it could be realized and lived out. But uh, so, and growing up and in the world of work, I experienced, of course, many things as everybody does. And, uh, but somehow that impulse grew stronger uh, and to the point where one has to understand what, what God wishes and why God wants it, and why God calls that individual. I'm not special. I'm not particularly holy. I'm really, I think, an ordinary person. I'm not mad or eccentric uh, in being a hermit. In fact, um, the thing about being a hermit is that you, you're just a someone whose humanity is part and your experiences of the past make the person you are but in that response to the divine call you offer who you are and what you are to God's greater glory something not of your own doing but it is a response to that call to go from God um, a hermit is a monk. Now I want to explain something simple, simply. You know, the original meaning of the word monk means single or solitary. In fact, uh, so a hermit is a monk, but not in the technical sense of being a religious, uh, a member of a monastic community, but in the original sense, meaning single and solitary. In fact, in the first couple of centuries of the life of uh, leaving the world, as it were, uh, to be alone with God, the first of monastics were hermits. It was only later with uh, people like St. P uh, Pagomius and Benedict and, and St. Basil, who, who wrote rules for a group of uh, uh, hermits, which then became developed later into monastic communities, but there have always been hermits in the church, um, bearing witness in that solitary existence to the cosmic reality of prayer. Um, so, um, although one is in a sense separated uh, from humanity, on a cosmic level, one is united with humanity. Uh, 
for the good of the church. So what are some of the practical realities of being a hermit today? Well, of course, uh, anyone can be called to be a hermit. You don't need to. You can be a priest, as I am, or a lay person. And, um, but you need a sense of direction in your life if you're going to live such a life, because it is a big leap of faith. And it requires a strong and stable psychological uh, well-being, and inter which is integrated into your spiritual life. And may it come about through many years of testing, or many years of seeking and seeking and seeking, sometimes making mistakes and going down uh, dead ends until you emerge into the light of day and see once more that you are being led. Like Moses who ascended Mount Sinai to encounter the Lord in, uh, and speak to the Lord, Moses uh, received the message of God uh, not for himself alone but for the people uh, of Israel to whom he would give God's message. So it is an, an encounter in one's daily life with that but the other reality. Well, it's not, not something um, esoteric. It's not something uh, unusual in a way. It's living out that vocation. Of course, the world, of course, the worldly, those who are worldly and attached to the world, don't understand it at all. It's so. It's totally, shall we say, countercultural. And even within the church, there are some people who, who don't think it's relevant. But if we are to believe in the primacy of prayer, it's totally relevant. In fact, souls who are called to this way of life are, as it were, as I said. Uh, like a lighthouse keeper, uh, to be a light to guide people. The, uh, in fact, I go so far. The Church, Catholic Church recognizes the the hermit way of life in canon law. I'll quote from uh, 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 Canon Law um, six o three. Quote. Besides the institutes of consecrated life, the Church recognises the eremitic or anchorite life, by which the Christian faithful devote their life to the praise of God and the salvation of the world through a stricter separation from the world, the silence of solitude and assiduous prayer and penance. A hermit is recognised in the law, in the law, as one dedicated to God in a consecrated life, if he or she publicly professes the three evangelical counsels confirmed by a vow or sacred bond in the hands of the diocesan bishop and observes his or her own plan of life under his direction. There you are. Well, you see, therefore, I'll explain. It's a, a little bit more complicated because I'm a priest as well. So I have a relationship as an ordained priest with my bishop in that sacramental role to be of service to the church as a priest. And so, first of all, my relationship with my bishop as my spiritual father is in that sense that, uh, that any other priest who is incarnated into the diocese in which he resides has. But there is another relationship, of course, being a hermit. First of all, the, the individual has to, uh, after years of, of uh, reflection, uh, uh, come to a point when he seeks 
to uh, share with his bishop uh, what is in, on his heart and how he feels called to such a vocation, within a vocation, if you like. Uh, then the bishop um, uh, connects that person, as I have been, to um, a, a spiritual director, one who has knowledge of the spiritual life, uh, um, who will help that person discern whether he has a genuine vocation to such a life, whether he has the inner resources uh, to sustain that life. And so, um, and that uh, direction is one that continues. So, for example, I have a spiritual director, I have a sp priest spiritual director, and I have a lay spiritual director. But both are known to my bishop. And, uh, and I connect with my spiritual director periodically, usually by uh, video call. And so, um, in that way, um, I am connected. And uh, so, uh, spiritual direction is important. But you see, canon law recognizes the centrality uh, not only of the life of prayer, but of individuals called to such a life. So, practically speaking, then, how do I, as a Catholic priest and a hermit, live? I've been given a place to live, thank God, by my bishop, where I have a rule uh, which I keep to, which has been uh, approved by my spiritual director. And as a priest, of course, I say the divine office, as every priest must do so. But I follow the monastic breviary, which is a longer office, and uh, I get up. Uh, much earlier, I'll get up at five o'clock in the morning and I go to bed uh, by ten o'clock at the latest. And uh, during the day, punctuated by the divine office and by silent prayer, I seek to use my time in prayer and study and in manual labour, that's work, whether it's in the garden chopping wood, fixing things, the ordinary household chores that people have to do, certainly if you're on your own. I also try to reach out to people, especially as I'm doing today on my video channel in Montum Sanctum, where I try to share with everybody um, various aspects of the Christian life, particularly of prayer, to give people encouragement in their own lives and, and to help them find the path to enter by the narrow gate that leads to, to that, uh, that light that shines in the darkness. How do I, uh, how do I manage to live? Well, um, I'm now at an age in the autumn of my life where I have a state pension and I try to live a simple, frugal life. Uh, I don't uh, um, so that I bear witness to my connectedness with the earth uh, and so holy poverty. And uh, of course, as a priest, I can receive a, a, a mass stipend that if someone wants to make a donation to me, to, for me to offer a mass for their intentions, of course, that is a, a source of income. But I do not seek uh, uh, the alms from anyone, but I try to be self-reliant. As I'm living in a, a presbytery, that's a priest's house, and next to me is, is, the, is the church of the parish, I've come to an arrangement with a parish priest so that my connection with the parish is 
within certain boundaries that uh, that people know I I'm here, and uh, occasionally I will offer mass for the parish uh, when the priest uh, needs uh, assistance because he needs to be away. But um, that comes about through uh, an understanding. I uh, I try therefore to keep my contacts down socially to an absolute minimum. For example, um, if I have any obligation, family obligation, but in, uh, a char of charity, then I leave the hermitage um, to perform that act of charity. Um, but as I said, that. Um, I try to um, be very careful that the integrity of the aromatic life that I am living is not compromised. Uh, Arsenius, one of the early Desert Fathers, talks, uh, gave three words of importance. Flee, be silent, and be at rest. Flee from the world. Now, you must understand that fleeing from the world is not meant to be a negative thing. In fact, one is not running away from something, one is running to something. One is running more and more into the arms of the beloved, beloved, the Lord, who draws you and seeks you to do that. Your separation is not from uh, humanity, but from uh, the entanglements and attachments of a world that is uh, with uh, that doesn't acknowledge the spiritual, the other. So that that's in a sense one flees from the world, because one realizes that one's home is truly in heaven, ultimately as as it is for all of us. Um, this. Uh, Separation from the world is one of uh, love and compassion for the world, to bind up the wounds of those who are, are lost and seeking spiritual comfort and help. Uh, the second word of Arsenius is silence. You see, it's not just a, a silence of uh, uh, absence from noises, but the hermit must develop that inner silence, that inner cell where he seeks and finds his beloved. And the third word is repose, rest, resting in the arms of the one who calls you, who, uh, like St. John, rested on the breast of our Lord at the Last Supper. That's what the Lord wants you to do. And uh, so there we are. I don't know what else to tell you about uh, my life. Uh, let me see. I do think it's very important that uh, I share these things with you because one of my, as I said, one of my listeners said, you should do that. It's not for your own good. It's for the, the good of the church. So... There we are. The inspiration for the Holy Spirit uh, has asked me to share with you today a little bit about the life I'm living. The world today desperately needs to find peace, needs to find a meaning to, uh, to life. So many people are living lives that are sad, and, and lost. But I'm an ordinary person. I'm nothing special. But ever since uh, I was a little boy, I realized that God wanted me to do something for him, for him alone. And uh, even when uh, I've been in a crowd or with other people, I have uh, sought that presence that a crowd or people couldn't supply. 
You see, a hermit is a, a kind, should be a kind and compassionate person, one who loves people. That's the, the, the irony of the situation here. A hermit is one who loves humanity, has compassion for humanity. And so is, is in get, and when that uh, engages at a deeper level, Of course, there will be people who think that this way of life is uh, eccentric or odd. But believe me, there is nothing odd or eccentric about following Jesus into the desert for the greater good of the world and for the church in particular. There we are, my friends. I hope today I've tried to share with you something of my life. And perhaps in the future, I, I might um, speak a little bit more about it. But for now, that's, that's enough. Bless you. Now, one of my important roles is that I pray for you. Not only do I, I pray for you with, when I offer Holy Mass, but in my intercessory prayer, and in my silent prayer, gathering all these souls together and offering them to the Lord. And Lord, as I say, Lord, you know the needs of all people who cry out to you in their need. I offer them to you. For the love of your sacred heart, I offer them to you. I'm nothing, but he is everything. And the more I realise that in my life, the more God's work in me will be fulfilled and done for the greater good of the world and the church. Bless you.